Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, September 26th, 2022. I am man with bum leg, and uh, today we're going to do a video, um, and we're going to do a companion video for an article I wrote on my website. Um, so I wrote this article, uh, some early thoughts on live view native, and I'm not going to regurgitate the entirety of the article here. Uh, I will link it in the description below. Um, but basically I introduce, um, uh, so there's this new technology called live view native. Um, and I kind of go through what it is. <laughs> um, and I will say that I will repeat that right now. So live view native, um, is a technology that helps, that aims to help, uh, live view developers, uh, deploy applications on mobile platforms like iOS and Android using the existing live view knowledge that they have. Um, and to explain what live view is, uh, for those who don't know, live view is a technology, uh, it's a feature of the Phoenix framework, which is built in a language called Elixir. And this basically lets you, um, create interactive real time collaborative web experiences. Um, and so the way this works is, uh, you on a web browser, you request a website and, uh, on the server end, a process will be generated, um, and the template for your page, like the payload, the initial page payload, uh, will be sent down. Um, and then at that point, the user will interact with the page and they will send events to back to the process. The process will, uh, you know, work through those events, come up with the new state and then render a very like declarative reactive, um, uh, UI and then send the diffs down to the client, which in this case is a web browser using HTML. And so this kind of flow lets you build, um, you know, interactive websites where a lot of the, uh, logic, uh, lives on the server and there are benefits, uh, and trade-offs to that. Um, but live view is very popular in my circles. And so live view native is this concept where, um, instead of having the client be a web browser and the template language being HTML, uh, instead the clients will be iOS and Android and the, and the templates will be in Swift UI or Jetpack Compose, which are those two platforms, appropriate, um, you know, reactive declarative based, uh, you know, layout systems. Um, and yeah. And so, um, what I did this weekend was I worked through, uh, a tutorial that they, so live natives out. And they have this um, tutorial that kind of gets you started. Um, it was kind of fun because it uses Apple's own um, like tutorial uh, framework um, for building stuff. So um, really quick, I'm going to show you the outcome of this. So I'm going to st stop and I'll hit play in Xcode. And this is going to compile my um, application. You can see I have a little custom um, kind of startup thing. And then we've got this uh, you know, table view, list view, presentation, um, in native, uh, Swift UI. And then as I interact with it, uh, you know, new views load and I can hit back. Um, there are, uh, this is actually mixes native, uh, Swift UI widgets with custom widgets. So this heart thing is a custom widget, um, which maybe we'll get into in a little bit, but, um, the way this works, uh, I guess I'll start here at the client uh, <laughs> while we're here is that like, so in Swift UI, you typically define a, a content view. And then in that content view, you declare, you know, what you're doing for us, we're just embed this thing called a live view and we give it a coordinator and this coordinator has the information, um, to, you know, load our site. So we're going to be loading localhost 400, which is uh, a live view with list of cats. Um, there also is our my register here, which we can get into a little bit later. Um, and then the results of that, which are going to be Swift UI values, um, will just be injected. So coming back to Elixir and Phoenix, um, this is the cats list live view. Um, you can see, uh, it's basically just got a list of cat, uh, identifiers. And then in mounts, um, we sleep for, a uh, uh a second, which is mostly just for testing different things. Um, and we assign our process state just like we would normally. Um, 
and then we render stuff. So the render the template is not uh, inline, unlike I'd say most live views these days, but it is a separate file. Um, and in this file, uh, and you can see in the file name, it's like catlistlive.ios.heeks. Um, the idea there being that you can designate each platform in their own um, template. And so here, this is uh, SwiftUI code, pseudo SwiftUI code. So basically you've got uh, a list, you've got a navigation link, which will be the thing when you tap on the cell. You've got uh, text views, you've got button views, you have a horizontal stack view, um, you have async image, um, which will load the, you know, the image for the right side of the cell. Um, and so what happens is that your iOS app launches, it, it instantiates this live view of view class, and then it'll make a call to the server. The server will start the live view process generate the template, push the template down to the client, and then the client will kind of just inject all this Swift UI code right into the view hierarchy, and then Apple will, you know, render it uh, just like it would normal Swift UI code. Um, and, and then you can do more things. Uh, <laughs> so, like, in the example of the clicking action, um, there's this navigation link. Um, and this is kind of interesting. Uh, they basically, you know, reuse the redirect and um, you know routes system that we would always use normally in a live view application, um, and that'll you know give the uh, the local system enough information to know that like when you click this cell in this table, you know you're gonna you know um, I, I guess it's like a patch <laughs> I don't know HTTP patch or however it works under the hood you know get to uh, this new view. Um, which is its own live view. So like this is cat's list live, but there's also, um, you know, cat live, which is just a, you know, a detail page that mounts an individual cat and then some like favorites and score numbers. Um, and then that has its own, you know, a uh, Heeks template with um, Swift UI stuff. So this is a vertical stack and uh, it's got async image and then a cat rating, which is a custom view that we built um, in Xcode. So yeah, um, this was kind of fun to work through the tutorial. Uh, as I said, the, the blog post that I wrote um, basically introduces LiveView, talks about my history with iOS development and why this is kind of an interesting project for me particularly. And then, um, kind of goes through uh, some of the challenges the, the project's going to face um, in that, like, they're trying to, you know, pitch this as a, like, you know, live boot view people can do mobile without really learning mobile, and I I think I challenge that uh, assumption. Um, and I also have some concerns about Apple approval because it's all, it's like, it's one of these things that, like, there's a, there's a rule in the app review guidelines that basically say you're not allowed to do this, but everybody does it anyway. Um, so I don't know how that's going to land. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll see. And then, uh, yeah. And then just a bunch of like leftover notes. Um, but I thought it would be fun to kind of do this video because it lets me kind of click around a little bit. Um, so as far as the, the Phoenix side of this, um, I don't think there's too much else to really look at. Um, uh, let me just see here. Catless live. So the templates all have this like crud, you know, function from file thing. Um, and this this feels just like a temporary thing while they're you know working on the project to to get the work. Um, and all the other like handle events are pretty standard and. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to add about that. So I'm going to jump right to the Xcode thing and I'll bring up Xcode and our simulator. Um, so uh, most of your work in the tutorial will happen here in like the content view. So you create the live view and you pass it to the coordinator. The coordinator has a couple things. Um, one, it's got this URL, it's like where to start. Um, and then it also has this thing called a My Registry. So the way this works is that um, the coordinator kind of helps the system like figure out like what views 
that are coming down the wire are appropriate to which um, Swift UI views. And so in the case of like my registry, like that is where I can define custom views. So for example, I have this thing called a cat rating. Um, and, you know, whenever you see, uh, you know, cat rating, you should return a cat rating view, which is something like is a custom Swift UI view that we wrote uh, that manages the little hearts. So like, as you look at flippers here and you give them a, a one heart or a four heart, um, is rendering this view as a native, um, they're all native, but <laughs> as a custom Swift UI view. Um, and so that's kind of like integrated here. And this is just a standard horizontal stack for zero to effective score, colors, hearts filled and unfilled. Nothing terribly exciting there from a Swift UI standpoint, but that's a custom view. And then if you look in the um, in the existing uh, in the dependencies that you load, um, that's where you'll start to see the default registry. So let me see if I can find this. So if I go to the Live View Coordinator, that takes a custom registry related to which Swift UI elements. Um, and that's the general idea is that like they're trying to kind of lean on Swift UI. Like they want it to be the whole point of Live View Native is that like it's not a web wrapper. Web view wrapper, it's legitimate native, you know, view hierarchy. And so um part of the project is just making sure that they can support all of the different Swift UI views, uh nouns, if you will. Um and they're slowly working on all that. Um what else is there to say? Uh yeah, I mean, I had fun working through the tutorial. Um, it says it takes about three hours, although for me it took about an hour and a half. Um, but you can kind of work through building up this little cat viewer app <laughs> um, in Phoenix, uh, in LiveView Native, um, and get a little bit more familiar with the project. Um, and then if you have, uh, you can definitely read up my article for more details about my hot takes on it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought I'd do a video, uh, kind of connect the dots here. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please do let me know. Other than that, have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.